Hi and welcome here with Gab and Georgina and we're going to be discussing what we call the drama queen pattern. And to kick this off, I'm going to share a quick story. And as I share that story, you're going to think about all the people that you know that have this pattern because it's a fairly common pattern and it destroys businesses, by the way. If you're a business owner with a drama queen pattern, you're in trouble. So the drama queen pattern happens when a person loves drama or they have an addiction to drama. This type of person, by the way, they're going to look you in the eye and they're going to say, no, I don't have an addiction to drama. They don't see it. They don't know it. But what you'll notice about them is that if they're a business owner, well, we just forget whether they own a business or not. A drama queen, they'll show several traits. The first one is that they're always having relationship dramas. They're always off someone. Uh, um, they're, they're always going to war with someone or there's conflict with someone or the opposite. They're highly embroiled in someone else's emotional situation or their drama and they're trying to rescue them. And they talk a lot about what others do or have done or should do or shouldn't do. And there's a lot of emotional uh, interactions with others. Oftentimes, the drama queen feels most alive when there is drama. Now, first of all, <laughs> Georgina and Gab, what goes on in a business when a business owner has drama queen tendencies? Yeah, from my perspective, we've well, had a, a, oh, sorry, the, there's just been a few clients that I've had and um, especially if they've got a team, there's, there's a lots of distrust in the team uh, because a lot of the time the drama queen personality will have a few people that they will speak to in the business or even other business owners and they'll gossip. And one of the, you know, one of the key features of a drama king is the gossip. And, and so there, there's definitely, um, there can be even be clickiness, <laughs> you know, like I've seen clickiness in, in business owners um, and the gossip can just really sabotage every part of the business because there's just no, um, there's no trust and there's no uh, integrity, I guess. Totally. The staff can never trust the drama queen business owner because mm -hmm. The drama queen turns their emotional voltage up all the time and you just know it's a matter of time before you cop it. Yeah. Because, and, and, and I just want to say something before I hand over to Georgina, there's, uh, if, if you took a drama queen and you put them in a situation where they weren't allowed to have or couldn't have drama in their interactions, I guarantee they will feel bored, flat. They might feel low self-worth. They'll have uncomfortable feelings because they're wired and addicted like a drug addiction to getting really wired up because such and such did this and they betrayed me and then I did this. They tell you they don't like it, but that's the addiction. They feel alive. It feels natural to them. Okay, so they actually unconsciously typically don't want good quality relationships, even though they look you in the eye and they say they will. On the unconscious level, there's parts that love the drama and the emotion. Georgina. Yeah, Perry. Well, you know, I've worked with a couple of drama queen or, or drama king um, entrepreneurs who actually one of the main focus um, or one of the main motivators around the drama is the distraction. So just like you were saying, if, if the drama isn't there, then what are they left with? And, and oftentimes it's it's uncomfortable feelings, maybe a sense of low self-worth or low self-esteem. Um, so they want to project 
what's going on internally for them onto someone else so that they don't have to take responsibility for it. They can be, they can appear to take um, um, charge of it because they're the ones that are noticing it. But in actual fact, it's a projection of what's going on on an unconscious level within themselves. So the, 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 the key component for them in the drama, creating the drama is the distraction um, I, you know, if, if, if there's a part of the business that isn't working or that they should be working on and they're not feeling really comfortable around it or they're feeling insecure around, say, doing marketing or, or something that maybe puts them out there, they'll look at other things that are going on in the business that they can use as a focal point, create some drama, make a big story. You know, I mean, on a functional level, people who have the drama queen um, pattern there, there are also some functional aspects of storytelling and being able to relate to people, but this is when it's in a dysfunction, when the drama is actually causing a disruption within the business. I mean, it can, drama can be used to create a story and to motivate people and bring them in, but oftentimes when we see this as an issue for clients, it's because they're using it in a very dysfunctional way to distract and to project and to not take ownership of what's actually going on for them in yeah. their business. So, you know, as you talk, a, a, a basic truth, what I'd consider a basic truth sort of came to mind that, you know, when, when they're being so emotionally dramatic and getting embroiled in human story and she said, he said, um, they're not in their logical mind. They're not being strategic. Business itself is strategic and, and a logical endeavor. Um, and, you know, as you talk, you're saying they're engaging the emotional aspects, the human story aspect. So you just can see they're not doing business. So just mirroring what you said, they're not looking at, well, what's the problem? How do I fix this? <laughs> they're often emotional embroilment <laughs> with some issue with someone or something or some dramatic challenge or rescuing someone. Gab, anything you want to bring before we close this one off? Yeah, you just you just um uh you just actually said what I was thinking and that's that the drama queen will often um you know one of the patterns that they'll bring into business which can be one of the biggest sabotages is that they will attract in the, uh the victim into their business so that they can be the rescuer and they can create that drama. So anybody that's a business owner that does has the, does have this drama queen pattern, they need to really, you know, that the thing is the ownership. But in the ownership, you'll see that um, it's coming down to attracting what staff and what people that you're bringing into your business. If you're noticing a lot of your staff are uh, victims and they're calling in sick all the time or they're creating drama, then you know perhaps you've taken on the rescuer rescuer role. Um, so that, you know, and then that creates the drama in the relationship and that undermines everything in the business. <laughs> By the way, really good point. It's something I hadn't even thought about it. And there's another person that I'll attract. So you're right. If, if, if the drama queen has a rescuing disposition, so by the way, for everybody listening and watching, that means that, you know, someone else is, you've got a staff member and they're broken up with their boyfriend and they're crying a lot. So you're there spending hours, you know, a week trying to console them, the poor thing. I'll spend time with them, getting them feeling comfortable and okay. And, of course, this victim's going, oh, this is great. I'm getting love. I don't have to work. I'm getting some cuddles from my boss. Um, and the other alternative, a drama queen can be uh, conflictual. So often it's about betrayal. They've betrayed me. Um, so the other attraction mechanism will be not just, you know, if you've, if you've got the rescue, you'll attract victims into the business. If you're conflictual and betrayal, you'll attract rebels into your business. And you'll be... And you'll be the bitch, the bitch. Yep, yep. <laughs> part of your personality. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> it's just classic how this works. This, would, this is not what today is about, but you actually brought up a really important thing, Gab, and we know this from doing a lot of recruiting, coaching, and working with clients. Your, your staff will be um, a reflection of your pattern. So if you've got a strong rescuer, you will have people that want to be rescued working for you. If you are a uh, conflictual person who feels that people are disrespecting you, betraying you all the time, you will have people in your business that play up, that don't work, that, that are rebellious, so who, who, who um, will cause you drama. 
On the unconscious level, you're going, Yahoo, it's what I want. Consciously, you're not building a successful business, but the patterning, you're going, Yahoo. There's some people that have betrayed me. Good, I can get angry and I can go off and rush off to my friends. That's the other thing. We're going to finish with this. All drama queens. Oh, one other thing you've mentioned before, Judy. When we, I use the word drama queens, that's not that's men and women. <laughs> yeah, Georgina used the word drama king. I just used the drama queen with your male or female. But the 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 the, the last defining um, aspect of it is that they will always look for collusion. So they always look to bring people on side to agree with that viewpoint or that pattern. That's why it's the story. Yeah. The storyteller plays a really important part. Okay, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone got a lot from the drama queen pattern. <laughs>